Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, we're really excited to come back to you with another episode of Data Bytes. I've got the uh, normal group with me here. I've got Chris Moriarty uh, joining us again, and I've also got Mr. Jason Baumgartner, and they are live from the Suds Creative Headquarters, and I just came from our Akron headquarters, and we are really excited to just get back to normal just a little bit. And we're going to give you kind of the normal roll through. We're going to give you an update on the, the national look, the states, the trends, predictions. Very interesting. I was terrible on predictions. Chris and Jason were right on. You'll hear about those here in a second. Then we'll talk about what's coming down the path still uh, for data bytes and some feeds in a webinar. So we're going to jump right into it, guys. Uh, Jason, give us a, a quick synopsis of what do you see around the country, and then I'll confess my uh, really poor predictions I made. Go ahead. Sure. Well, you know, week 18 was fantastic. So we benefited definitely from a phenomenal weather week uh, across the country, across the regions, across the country. Um, a few pockets in some lower population states, but, but uh, overall really positive. 29% uh, increase from week 17 to week 18. So that, that trend um, continued upward at, at a little higher clip than we were uh, anticipating. Still about 16% down from that particular week last year and you'll notice in the blue and again these are weekly car count averages by state that then we aggregate up nationally um, in the blue you see a, a little bit of a dip from week 17 to week 18 we went back and we looked at the weather um, on the weekend of um, that that particular week in 2019 and week seven uh, between week 17 and week 18 and there wasn't a big weather impact that caused that dip so um, the, the progress that was made definitely in 2020 benefited from the good weather um, and, and we're really closing that gap. So up 29% week over week and only down about 16% um, from this same week last year. And uh, one important thing to note too is, you know, as we, as we talk about being 16% down, um, overall, if you look at, at week one, um, in the orange, and that's 2020. Week one is the only week before the pandemic that we had lower car counts compared to 2019. Um, and overall, we were about seven and a half percent up if you exclude week one from the numbers. So really, when you're talking about being 16% down, you know, it's 16% down from 2019 numbers, but we were trending up at a clip of about seven and a half percent. So um, just important side note so from a from an opportunity perspective we think we're close to 25 percent we're, we're we're short of where we should be uh, is another way to say that and by the way this is my if you guys remember last year on the video i predicted 11 percent because we had 11 percent three weeks in a row jason commented he thinks they'll be closer to 20. he wins the uh the big stuffed animal prize at the carnival for sure because i was way off Yay. And once again, he prognosticated correctly, like like he uh, he usually does. So we do have great so trends. happy for him. <laughs> Congratulations! We've seen daily numbers um, from our clients that went across forty seven states. So it's so you cheated. It's just being in tune with the present. So he was cheating. That's totally what it was. All right, I see how. It All right, hey uh, Chris, talk to us about what's what's cool as we look across straight. What's really I think fun is we're actually starting to actually be just as reliant on weather as we are with any concerns about COVID or anything else. Uh, yeah. That's really exciting. So what did you see on weather and, and what did you see last week across the states? Well, as, uh, as we were, I think we were talking yesterday, it's like we, we finally got our old problems back. Yeah. Which, uh, which would be weather related. And, and this, this week was obviously very interesting. And as weeks go by, we have to alter the map a little bit because this is such a fluid situation. So this week you'll notice there's just a lot more variance in different levels of just growth. And there's very, very few categories for anybody who got a pullback. In the states that did get a pullback, um, it was marginal. And the only one where we could really make a weather-related argument uh, for it um, was Wyoming. Uh, but most of those were still within their normal deviation. So uh, we really caught a really great week. Yeah. Where, where I thought this week was so fun because we spend so much time looking at these states you know, they, we almost personalize them to the point where they have their own little identities and you start rooting for different states because you see what other states are doing. And like, you, could, you can do it too. And so for the last three weeks, that's been Michigan for me. It's been my, my Rudy moment. You know, Michigan, Michigan. And then finally this week, they, they just came storming back, as did many others. And what we need to remind ourselves is, you know, we're looking at percentage growth. 
but obviously a percentage of a small number and a percentage of a big number, we have to make sure that we read this for what it is, which are indicators, indicators of velocity and pace. But what we're seeing is that entire lift and we need to make sure that you're looking locally to where you can hit the gas. Because for most of you, the time is now uh, in terms of what you're gonna do. As soon as this thing fully lifts, you got a whole lot of companies that are behind. They're gonna be throwing good money after bad into every marketing channel available. And there's gonna be a lot of noise. So we need to take advantage of any, any little seam uh, that we have within this time period. Very good. And it's really exciting to see so many states have, having growth. And really we had a great, great, uh, by the way, the diagonal lines for everybody, that means their they were, uh, weekly average was actually above 2019. I think we had 13 states, that the weekly average was above 2019 for the same week. So again, we're, we're in that lower end of normal, but we're approaching the normal and it is so great that we're, the weather actually a really great weather week helps so much. It tells us that we're to your point, Chris, back, back to our old problems. And uh, you know, we're, a, we're an Ohio based company, so we're going to forgive uh, the whole Rudy Michigan thing from Chris Moriarty <laughs> for the state up North and we're going to let that go. But uh, we're all about the car wash industry and we're, we're allowed to see all those, all those trends. Uh, I'm going to jump, Jason, unless you have anything else, I'm going to jump into your, uh, we're going to go a little further here. Uh, first of all, national credit card volume, uh, just to let you guys know, really great first of May. You really saw the recharges coming back within 10% of normal. Again, this is a sample. It doesn't represent everything, but it's a really, really good trend. And we've now really had three days in a row um, where we're above, uh, uh, you know, well in, into a normal range and we're really excited about that. So, so this is carrying forward the same trend, not normal, but we're getting there very quickly. And then closures, the amount of sites that were closed, you know, second half of March, six times the normal amount. And now you can see we're approaching normal. We're still, we're still pretty high, uh, but we're, we're back into what early March was when we all started reacting to this thing. So again, we're really excited about uh, site closures. And again, this isn't everybody, but this is a really good sample set. And we're really excited about the trend that this shows. Jason, you always walk us through a few states. Uh, tell, us the, tell us the story that you see this week. Well, you know, the story, there, there's so many states that you could choose from um, this in, in week 18. And so I picked four or five um, for each one of these slides. But you, you see California really encouraged by the steady growth of California. You know, we, ha we have several clients there that have actually um, eclipsed um, w since they've reopened, they've actually added more members um, than they lost during COVID-19. And so, you know, that's a big thing for us is, as uh, for our clients, the, the idea of that rapid recapture of, of any lost revenue, specifically well, Jason, monthly to that, revenue. That is becoming less and less rare. And the conversations, yeah. again, anecdotally, we've been having with offices all week. And again, even this morning, where so many folks who had that pullback initially, folks not only came back, there are uh, many, many of them are up from, from where they began. Uh, I would not have predicted that would have happened so fast, but it is, again, it is not rare. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it, I guess it just goes to show you how this, this industry seems to be bouncing back a lot quicker. We, we are literally one week into reopening phase, you know, that, that started in some states around May 1st. So um, really positive California, Michigan, Chris mentioned Michigan, you know, they were kind of, floating along that floor for a while, really nice bounce back. And, and to my knowledge, I don't know if there's been any super easing of restrictions either. So, so it's, that, that's an interesting state to keep your eye on, but certainly they benefited from good weather as well. New York, I, I put New York and Ohio on here because they, they have had such steady growth and it's not as dramatic as what you'd see in California. Um, and, and some others like even New Mexico had just a huge jump this week. Um, and, and Hawaii was at zero and then, you know, they shot up as well, but, but New York and Ohio, I think that that is, they're probably, Ohio is probably an indicator of kind of a, an average state in, in the country that, that wasn't on the high side of being affected by COVID-19, like in New York or, or California or Washington. Um, but, but they've just had just slow, steady growth. And you can see they're just, you know, kissing that, that same number um, at week 18 as they were in 2019 uh, with the 2020 number. So 
again, really positive, a lot of positive things to talk about, but I chose these four slides. Well, Jason, it was a great social distancing joke with the whole kissing thing. I think that, yeah, was, uh, right. that was a well placed there. All right, let's talk about, you know, you, we had a conversation yesterday and you mentioned that, you know, there, there's some people that you think are poised to like take off. Talk about some of those states. Well, I think in you know the Mid Atlantic, the Maryland's, the Virginias, they're 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 just kind of still at that that floor level. Um, you'd like to see them bounce back. I think Wisconsin, what we've seen with Minnesota uh, last week, and then Michigan this week, Wisconsin is is still uh, at the floor and really start trying to come off of the floor. So, uh, would love to see them have a, a really dramatic increase like we saw in Michigan and Minnesota. Um, and in Washington, you know, th there was some, or Chris, you live in Washington. We had some weather this, this past weekend. Um, yeah, but, it, you know, it doesn't seem like they've, they've made that bounce back. And you can kind of see the, the dramatic effect of weather in the state of Washington, even when you look at the orange with 2019 numbers. They have these peaks and then they can go into a valley and then, and then have a dramatic peak. Would love to see something like that happen in, in Washington, you know, a state that's been hit pretty hard. Um, and then North Carolina, we, we haven't seen necessarily North Carolina. They didn't have the type of decline that some of the other states had, but, but they also haven't had the type of increase as well. So that, that's another state that we're keeping our eye on. Chris, you're going to say something? That, yeah, Wisconsin's a really interesting thing that we should probably uh, take a second to highlight because normally what we look for is obvious, precipitation, right? But in many, many states, you'd, you'd be amazed at how much just, just the temperature alone uh, can really swing what happens. And I haven't measured this. I haven't run it through any proper analysis or whatnot. But from what I recall and seeing some chatter is that Wisconsin was unseasonably cold recently. And like it just cold snap or something to that effect. People, please write in, chime, comment if I'm way off or if I'm, uh, if I'm close to something. But we know as it gets warmer in places, people want to go out. There is a longing to be out yeah. in the sun, yeah. and that's, of course, going to drive some of these activities. So despite the lack of precipitation where you live, that doesn't mean that the weather itself is not playing a role. Yeah, and so also, we always want to look at that and investigate that. We're also excited. I know uh, Governor Hogan from Maryland is actually having a news conference this afternoon. He's expected to start opening that state up some, and I think Fantastic. that will affect some of this. And too, so. Congress came back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. Yeah, that, Virginia that, and Maryland. That area of the country is going to start getting busy. You know, I just want to recap, uh, go back to a slide we had last week, the new normal. We, we talked about this so much and, and how did we do? I was, I guess, the bearish and Jason was a little bit more, more bullish and I can have all kinds of jokes about that. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think the new normal is there's a potential of a faster pace than we expected. Um, you know, what, Jason and Chris, you look at the numbers a lot what's your best high level prognostication for the pace of the improvement coming out of this? Let's just say for the next couple of weeks, Jason, what's your thought? Well, we certainly have the benefit of having States start to reopen more traffic equals more opportunities to convert road traffic into, to wash traffic. And as we've mentioned so often, you know, we're in the business of clean. That's a good business to be in right now. Um, so that's, that's a positive. I think what we're seeing is as you had 31 or so states enter into some easing of restrictions, we saw a really dramatic bounce back and certainly benefited from the good weather for, uh, for the week. But um, I'm more optimistic even than I was last week. And, you know, to that end, I think that there, there is an opportunity, we talked about this a little bit last week too, to encourage people to pay with a card, um, and, and go cashless, which um, allows, you know, customers to be less price sensitive. And so there's an opportunity on the revenue side to pick up some additional revenue just by re-examining some of your pricing strategy, as well as, you know, what a great opportunity to convert retail people to unlimited if you can have a completely touchless experience. So there's a lot of positives um, about what's going on behaviorally and how we are changing you know, as a society um, and the car wash, I, I don't want to be too optimistic, but I, I feel really good about the car wash as an industry because of the way that it's positioned and some of the, I mean, we've been, our job as at Suds is, you know, for the last four years has been to 
convert as many people from retail customers to unlimited customers as possible. That's literally 90% of what we do. Um, and so now we're, we're seeing uh, operators get more ag aggressive. And so, so their threshold of being, being, you know, wanting to spend a little bit more to be more aggressive and kind of capturing that American spirit of, hey, you know, I'm not going to just sit back and let something happen to me. I'm going to go make something happen. Um, that, that seems to be something that is, is, is flush in this industry. And we're taking advantage of that with our clients and, and it's re people are responding, consumers are responding really well to it. So I'm very optimistic. So Chris, you took your Rudy analogy and took it right forward. It's now the storyline of the video. This is fantastic. It's a great comeback story. So we're excited. We're really excited about that. And I've loved hearing the stories about how some of your customers have already made up or surpassed where they were before yeah. um, pre-COVID. Pre, pre and the one thing I would add to what Jason said is right now, um, you know, all the, all the patterns we analyze are based on behavior. We've kind of established that. We've seen behaviors change as specifically as it relates to the days that people are coming in. The enemy of any business is volatility. So as folks are leaning into these membership plans more and more and getting a positive response, um, it's going to help steady that cash flow. Because as states start coming back, people are going to change their behaviors. We know that. So what are they going to do? Are they going to continue to wash on Tuesdays as they have been? Or are they going to go back to Fridays and Saturdays? We don't know. But because of that uncertainty, you can expect higher volatility potentially within that retail side. So by leaning into the membership, you can bolster at least buffer against some of that effect. But we have to watch that. And, and a big reminder, keeping people, keeping that distribution wide lifts the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So we've been really talking to people about investigating ways to keep people in these new patterns. Yeah. Because if it works for them, it certainly is going to work for you. Yeah. yeah you can really, really open up your capacity by spreading folks out. You know, Chris, you made some predictions last week. Why don't you, uh, uh, and you did pretty good. I got to say, well, you did certainly way better than I did. Why don't you give us a yeah. quick walk through the, the four states we have in here? Talk, talk, about, so, talk about what's, what's predictive and, and what's not. So here's, here's my problem is um, this whole thing was supposed to be sort of a week over week sort of um, educational lesson, if you will, on how you refine a model to make it more and more accurate. So when I built these, um, it was really just raw data adjusted just a little bit for seasonality. No weather, certainly no weather forecasting or anything, um, because the idea was to show how they improve. Um, and because of the fact that we had no significant weather events, uh, the, the forecasts were unfortunately very, very accurate. So when you look at some of them with, uh, say, California and Texas, where especially with California, where it's been so steady, well, it, it should have been fairly accurate. They overshot their prediction, which if you're going to be wrong in a prediction, um, that's how you want to be wrong, meaning that uh, that's something outperforms your, your forecast. Um, Texas, uh, we were very, very accurate. Uh, the one on the next slide that um, I think was um, really showcases the ability of what this forecasting can do was Florida, where it wasn't a continuation of a pre-existing pattern, meaning just continue to flow up, it was a gap up. And to be able to predict a gap up to that effect and with that level of accuracy, um, we really had that, that, that was really tuned in. Now think uh, one storm and we would have been way off, right? So I, I was really nervous about showcasing like, oh yeah, they'll predict what's gonna happen next week with 97% accuracy. But, yeah, I, you know. I, I, think, I, think <laughs> you, I think you even expressed concern about that last week when we talked about it, that. You know, oh, it wouldn't, yeah. you know, this is quite a positive prediction, but yet came in really close. It, it did. And what I tell folks, as I tell all the time, that there are no crystal balls. You know, at the end of the day, it's just math. And if we could see the future, we would have seen all this coming, right? So as I forget who, I, I'm gonna, I won't misquote it, but I will say it's not my quote. But the quote is, all models are wrong, but are they useful? So we use these, use these as guides to help lessen stress and see around the curve. Uh, but just let us know that this, there's no magical or supernatural ability here, but the level of security this can bring to a business is, uh, is unquestionably valuable. Well, and, and I want to make a plug here. We don't really sell much in these videos, but it's been fun to work with you guys where you can actually go from a country to a state. You can go to individual customers and you can build models. And Jason, the things that, that your creative team does all the way from branding down to how we're going to actually push out campaigns and things like that, 
you can build that into a model and do some really cool predicting. So I'm really glad to oh. partner with guys that, that take this and they can apply it to a single business as far as what leverage we pull. And I think it's really good that when people invest marketing dollars, a lot of times they don't understand where they're going depending on how it's going. But you guys can provide an ROI to say these were the lines should go and this is where the lines went. So um, it's I really neat that, how you guys have applied that kind of to the country instead of just individual car washes. Well, and part of the bridge that I think people are, um, they're, they're unaccustomed to um, having access to some of these tools, number one. But when we look at, say, just pricing in general, one of the, you know, we, we focus so heavily on it that people assume that the way you price your wash levels is, is kind of the do all end all. It's going to predict what's going to happen or not going to happen and so on. So we're able to provide a number that basically says how much of your price can explain the quantity of that level that you're selling. Mm -hmm. And I want that to be around 60%. We don't want a high number because that's telling us that 40% of the reason that people are picking what they're picking has nothing to do with the price. And that's where the Suds team lives. That's your messaging. Those are your icons. Those are your pictures. It's all those things that we agonize over that are easily dismissed as pretty pictures and whatnot. People would fall over if they knew what goes into it, but it helps us. People just, I love to share that because it really widens the scope. Why yeah. do people do what they do? Yeah. Price is a component, but it is certainly not um, not the do-all end-all. Marketing magic made practical. I love it. Hey, let's talk about it. We, we've been looking at sentiment. I, I, I noticed a shift here, Chris. Uh, talk to us mm -hmm. about, and this is really recent data, right? Oh, yeah. I make sure that we run these as close to when we record uh, because this is so fluid. And announcements from the government or state, uh, local governments can really change. And so looking at this, we – you could kind of track over time. We were, everyone was very positive. Then as the country became more uncertain, you really saw that start to shift. Now with a lot of states taking a firmer stance on, yes, we are opening. Here's what it looks like. That certainty is pulling this back up. I think that combined with just good weather around the country, we all know what that does to our moods. And we're starting to see people just drift back on that positive side, which I love. I think that in a lot of ways that we'd all agree that uh, in, the, in the first stage of these things, it really it pulled people together. You know, we're helping, we're positive, we were goofy, whatever. And you started to see that turn south. And for us to come out of this and not maintain some of that unity, I think would be such a shame. So to see people pulling back out, eager to patronize businesses again, mm -hmm. to return and help and support everyone around them, um, this, this was very helpful. And uh, it's exactly what, uh, what I hoped for our country. And I am convinced that the really dark, strong green to the right are the people that got to go to the beaches this week, I'm pretty sure. They got, oh, yes. <laughs> they got that sunshine and everything else. So, hey, let's talk about re really uh, what's coming. First of all, we're going to have a uh, what you would have seen at ISEA on May 12th, and we're excited about that. Um, uh, and then, you know, Jason will continue to have webinars, but your take on what's coming down the pipe, Jason, and also a little, little take on what's uh, – going to be on data bikes next week yeah i went through a walkthrough today with uh with todd and taryn uh, about the you know what you would have seen at the ica show uh that's a seminar that, that drv's putting on on may 12th so stay tuned for that a lot of cool features coming out explanation and, and of the kind of new path forward on the software side it should be a lot of fun and then next week data bites i I heard Chris talk on on uh, this episode about uh, perhaps some some additional metrics that we can put in. Um, so you know, created a little bit more work for, for himself. But I'm I'm actually really excited to talk to you in the conference room after this uh, recording, so we can talk <laughs> yeah, about how. Yeah, yeah. Way to way to sign us up. Um, yeah. Hey everybody, uh, just have a have a great week. And again, our, our, our brand promise is around the fact that we love car washing as much as you do. And I, I've said it before, it's an all-American business. It's Main Street USA. It's capitalism at its finest. And we're so excited that some of you uh, have had a, a better week or two. And we are rooting for the rest of you to come out strong. And uh, we'll be talking to you again real soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dan.